Welcome my friends to my code editor. Since we're talking about how we take notes and we are, you know, doing this in the realm of programming, you can probably guess that for me, the most effective way to have a, a note taking system is in fact, within my code bases. So let's hypothetically assume this is a code base that we are building together in one of my many tutorials. Now for me, my learn to code experience was pretty much entirely within code repos building a new set of code, building a new set of codes. So for me, the logical way to organize or have a structured note taking system was to have it within code bases and use that in conjunction with GitHub, which I'll talk about shortly. Now in this project, you know, this is obviously some recent code. There's a couple of things we can see. First up, I'm going to show you what casual note taking looks like for me. So when I was building this app, I was working on the dashboard before I develop any of the applications, I do a whole lot of note taking. And what I do is just leave code comments everywhere. So let's say hypothetically, I had a blank dashboard. This is what the dashboard looks like at the moment. I started off by being like, okay, at the top, I want a stats container. I want it to have a name, a timer, a streak, a start button, some level bars and a success rate. The success rate didn't actually make it to the finished product, but you kind of get the idea. I also said to myself, I wanted a calendar with vertical percentage bars. So that's what we have down here. The percentage bar is your completion for your different habits. And I wanted a history portal. Now the history portal is actually a paragon example of my learn to code experience. Inside of this code repo just here, I have a component called portal. Now this portal structure is something that has stuck with me for the last three or four years, I came across it in a tutorial and it's something that I knew I wanted to remember forever because there's 101 ways to create a modal or portal overlay inside of React. And this was by far the most effective way that I had come across. What I'm going to do in a second is demonstrate what I would do if I was learning this for the first time. But essentially this code right here is in one of my very first GitHub repos on my, uh, you know, pretty much on my page. If you came back years and years and years, you would find this modal. And that's the crux of my system is that I build a code base and then I save the code base to GitHub and I have it for future reference. And even if I forget the exact specificities of what I need to do to create a modal overlay inside of React, I know that I can just head over to Zen Zen look at that code example inside a portal and it would be done for me. Now, when you're learning to code, just having the code example is often not sufficient. So what I would actually do, let's say just, to, you know, imagine we're building this out live together is I would explain the process in my own words. So the modal is rendered inside of the calendar. So what I would do is just above where I render out my portal, I would say, Okay, just in here, I'm going to literally add some code comments. That's like the portal is rendered here because the logic for its conditional rendering is relevant to this calendar, i.e. they click a day in the calendar and then the portal shows the history for that day. Then what I would do is just code comment this out. I'd probably leave another one beneath that just is a bit more explicit. I'd say something like the state to manage whether or not the port, the history portal is displayed is either null when no day is selected or it's equal to the day when a day is selected so that within the modal, we may look up the history for that day. Comment that out. So now I have two comments in here that explain how the portal rendering works. In fact, to be fair, I'd actually add one more. Actually, no, I can do that within the specific component. So now we've added the code comments here. So when I look back at this code repo, I can be like, okay, so I have a select date state that can conditionally decides whether or not to run this portal. Now what I would do is come into the portal and I would say, 
let's let's come in here the interesting thing about this particular portal is that it's not rendered in the traditional context of a react application essentially what you do is you write some new jsx and you select an entirely new root element to render it within in this case it's a div with the id of portal so i would say in the index dot html i created a sibling div to the root div with an id of portal then i'd add another one that says the code within or actually react dom package allows me to take some new jsx and render it within this newly created uh, div instead of being in the context of whatever component the portal is rendered within then i'd also say something like uh, react dom dot create portal takes two arguments one is the jsx and the second is the div within which we want to render the jsx so i look within the document for the element with the id of portal so now i have a whole lot of code comments just here right i've got the code comments that explain what's going on in here i've got the code comments within uh, the calendar the one other one i would add is maybe some more specific information about the divs in here so i'd say the container div is fixed position and takes up the width or essentially the screen width and height the underlay div sits behind the modal content and when clicked closes the modal and this one the portal content div contains the children content which is whatever is contained within the opening and closing portal tags where the portal is conditionally rendered in this case it's the calendar so i just add some comments explaining what each of them do here we've got the children the children is a property of uh, the component so the children is a property of the portal hence we access it from the props so i would add these comments in here just like that so now i have a portal system that is very explicit someone else could come in here and probably figure out what's going on pretty quickly and now what i would do is i would come over to github desktop it's my favorite way to save all of my repos and then you can see in here i've added all of these code comments i just say uh, you want to make it fairly explicit so detail the inner workings of the react dom portal slash modal and you could even add a description of exactly what you've done for rendering history above the rest of the app in a modal overlay just like that and then we can commit that to the main and we can push those changes to the origin which will in this case actually redeploy the app not that it's really relevant but now what this has allowed me to do is it means that i can come into the code base and let's say I'm building another app in future, you know, and instead of looking inside of a silly book that has all the code examples written out, I'm not going to do that. What I can now do is come to one of my many code repos. I know exactly which applications I've used it in because that's something you're going to remember forever. And I can just say, okay, well, I can come into the source component, the source folder. I can come into components and I can just look at the portal and I have a fully detailed code example of you know how this portal works and it doesn't matter that i didn't remember it 
because I know exactly how it works. I, you know, this process of taking these notes and explaining what's going on is critical for embedding, you know, a correct and adequate understanding of what the code does. You don't need to remember the exact syntax, you know, like I could never remember which of these letters was capitalized so i would always come back and look at this code repo and to be fair i would just i've written it in a way that i would just copy this and paste it into a new application i know exactly how it works i know what handle closed modal does i've got code comments that explain to me if i happen to forget and because in this example i use it a lot now i just remember it now it's not a big deal but i would say for the first two years of doing this kind of stuff i would always refer back to the code repo that i knew contained this specific example and this is how i would take notes when you're learning to code take notes i mean to be fair you will if you're getting into programming you will always be learning how to code there will always be new stuff you're learning save it to github i have so many examples of so many different things that i can refer back to at any point for example, backend development. I love my backend full course because it has some really clean examples of how to set up Prisma, Postgres, Docker, uh, and a Node.js application and get it all up and running. And so I don't have to remember exactly how everything works because in future I can just come in here, look at how the middleware works, look at how the JWT authentication works. And if I was following a tutorial, even if they didn't code comment it, I would code comment it. I would leave comments explaining in my own words how everything works because that's going to guarantee I understand it even better so that when I come back to it in future, I'm not lost just looking at some lines on a screen. I'm like, okay. I remember writing this code comment. I remember exactly how it works. You sorted. And once again, it's a beautiful way to go about doing this because the stuff that you do use often will inevitably be ingrained in your brain. And the stuff that you don't use enough to be worth remembering, well, you've essentially always remembered it. You always got a record of it that you can refer back to later because it's effectively indexed within GitHub. This is the only note-taking system I will ever use in programming. Programming is all about getting your hands dirty, being in a code base, and making sure that if you have a slightly complex code base, that it's well commented. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. That is my note-taking system you should absolutely start using, and I promise you, you will never need another one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons, love that support, and let me know if it works for you. Catch you guys later, peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the Learn to Code Roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.